Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young. I'm just going to walk you through some internal audit trends in the outlook for 2016. Because I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do with these brief presentations align IBM solutions as well as kind of look as we move forward as turning addressing key issues and pain points for business. This one presentation will be pretty brief. It'll just talk about some of the key points that are driving internal audit in terms of the talking point on the pre-sale or up-sales opportunity. So I'm going to talk overview of internal audit. I'll just talk very high level view of some of the issues facing internal audits for many companies. I'll talk about the top three trends and then I'll talk about the overall value proposition IBM offers. So many, many years have gone by. I've done some internal audit work in the past for various companies and the function has changed dramatically over the years and a lot of it has to do with the automation and that's driving it from basically setting up triggers to kind of manage things. So yes, you would still do the internal audit functions in terms of the cycles, but there's a lot of more proactive work done by internal audit now, more so than it's probably ever been done in the past. And I wanted to highlight that too. There's also another big issue that comes into play. There's more and more increased regulatory requirements that are being forced down by SEC or governments. This is also triggering aspects of internal audits in terms of investigation, in terms of part of the overall audit cycle. So that needs to be bear in mind. The other area that's going to drive this as well, as you see here, is cybersecurity. Is the more and more companies go online, do more digitalization of their operations from supply chain to e-commerce to just different aspects of their supply chain. There's more and more pressure of hackers trying to do things, so there's more and more pressure on the internal audit to monitor controls around malware, adware, any sort of things, entry points that could disrupt the business. Okay. Supply chain management, I brought that up, is because it's becoming more and more complex. There's more and more pressure on that. There's more operational risk on that side. I want to make sure that was clear that internal audit would likely be involved with that as well. Let's talk about some of the key areas quickly and trends. We're actually in a period of time where we're going to see probably slow economic growth. So budgets are going to be stretched. So it's going to be about how do you better manage the internal audit departments in terms of setting priorities. So you're going to likely see that more pressure on them to look at solutions that will help automate that stuff to help better control the internal control processes but allow them to better leverage the cost structure in terms of keeping the cost down by the department. That's really what you're seeing here. This gets into the more the, the regulatory side. That's what I said earlier is every you get the SECs to bring out new requirements on exhibits, whether that's to do with a mandate globally driven or it could be an SEC driven mandate. That puts more pressure on budgets of cost because now that you have to add that to an exhibit on your 10Q, 10K or statutory filings in general, that means basically you have to have a review of that. That means that's cost to business. So there's been a lot of pressure to bring more internal audit back in house because they want to control the cost that an external auditor would bring in as part of the mandate to part of the complexity of the regulatory side of filings. As the more and more companies go online through different things, they're going to be basically facing pressure from cybersecurity and different hack different ways maybe their business could be disrupted. The other thing too as well is companies are trying to be more agile. So this is where we're getting into more social analytics, different levels of data coming into the organization, the managing the big data. So you're seeing a lot bigger push to basically get this data, better manage it, better manage the infrastructure, but also have the proper internal controls in place to ensure that you're dealing with accurate data and the data is not being compromised either through privacy or any sort of security issues. As well as that the data is being made it's, it, it's comparable, it can be made for comparisons, and it's accurate. And that's another key thing where the internal audit department would come in. How does IBM fit into this? IBM has Open Pages, which is a risk analytics solution. There's an actual module called Internal Audit that basically allows you to automate a lot of the processes as part of doing the internal audit phase of a company. And I would encourage you to go out to the site to kind of look at the IBM value proposition because as you're looking at the overall audit function in terms of how you can better manage it. We also have other software in terms of different things from the Cognos controller side which does the consolidation. We also have a reporting software called Cognos Disclosure Management it allows you to collate reports together and maybe even bring some of the audit report processes into play as part of looking at that. So there's there's solutions that you can look at in terms of automation as part of looking at how you move your internal audit 
department for because it, to maximize its value, it's really going to come down to its ability to be agile to the decisions made by business, but also be able to automate processes to allow them to basically put focus on key control structures and frameworks to help mitigate any potential losses for business. Thank you.